The fedora wearing John Hudson is back once again with us to give us all the latest news on what is happening around the UFO world. And John, it's always a pleasure to have you back. How was your weekend, my friend? Weekend was lovely. Thanks for asking and happy to be here. And thank you everyone for sticking around. It's uh, going to be kind of interesting news stories tonight. Oh, absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. And thank you for doing this once again. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's fun. But the truth is, uh, I was doing this anyway, so I'm just sharing what I already do. <laughs> and and you're damn good at it, too, my friend. And our thank audience you, absolutely you. loves you. Let's start off with Dan Aykroyd. What's happening there? Well, this is more of a of a of a you know a, a gift, I guess, to those of us that are Dan Aykroyd fans that have seen some of his interviews and know his interest, and have been sitting here wondering well, why the on earth hasn't that bugger done any content, right? I mean, like, wait, like what better person could there be to bring in some good UFO documentaries, movies, whatever? And uh, and so basically, um, there was a, a, this article came out, which I'll provide the link for. Um, and what it does is it, it goes into a, a, a detailed interview of, of Mr. Aykroyd where he explains that he actually did. Um, basically, in the early 2000s, he was the executive producer of a show called Out There with Dan Aykroyd. And um, they not only got the contract, got it signed, got the budget. Um, it was all done with sci-fi, but they actually had um, eight episodes done. Like, I mean, basically, they were just finishing up the end of the first season, like completely ready to go. And the whole thing got canceled. And uh, because it is owned by sci-fi, he has no ability to get it back or to air it. And they have opted not to. And he doesn't even know if it still exists. Why did it get canceled? He never got a good story. Um, he was completely shocked by it. I mean, just just carpet yanked right out from under his feet. Um, you know, there, there might have been, you know, he alluded to, to some possible changes in leadership. Um, you know, he had a couple guesses as to what was going on. But um, he did along with it give a short um, men in black um, uh, possible story where he claims he was at another, uh, he was at a, a, another location and uh, he was outside on his cell phone. And believe it or not, at the time he was talking to Britney Spears. I don't know what the story is there, but that's who he was talking to. And, uh, and he saw across the street, uh, two men in black suits in a black car uh, looking at him uh, rather aggressively. And it, it stunned him. Like it, it shocked him. And basically he, um, he like he basically turned around, or or something caught his attention, or or a truck drove by. I don't remember what it was, but something blocked his view for a minute. And when he looked again, it was gone. And this happened right around the same time that the show got canceled. So um, you know that's just you know a fun anecdotal story. But um, but I just find it very interesting that he he did work on something. He talks a little bit about it. it sounds like it was a real passion project for him. I'm besting betting it was very good content you know a little outdated at this point but i'd still love to see it and to those of you that are Aykroyd fans like me this is why you have not seen anything from dan Aykroyd. i'm really surprised though with the opening up of this field that he hasn't come back i really am now he may have other projects and of course he has his crystal skull vodka and business well he is working on something right now Yes, he he is working on something, a project that has to do with the aerial school. And uh, I I don't know what the status is of it, but I know he is working on a on a uh, or at least he was as of last year working on a documentary film about the aerial school. But I haven't heard any updates yet. That would be interesting. I mean, we know this is a a very close story to his family. We know his father, and I believe his grandfather, were both ex Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and and they they've had a lot of experiences in the Ackroyd family with UFOs, you know. But his story of this getting canceled it reminds me of oh, what's the gentleman's name? Bill from UFO Hunters. Remember the TV show UFO? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Burns. Yeah, and yep, yep, yep. Will Burns saying that that show, which was number one in ratings for A and E at the time, got canceled by the Men in Black, and and Bill remembers being on location where a Man in Black came up to him, and and they were at their second to last episode. He said, the, according to Bill, I'm paraphrasing here. The Man in Black said, 
you better get what you can in here because you don't have a show next year. Yeah. Wow. And if you go back in our archives from a couple of years ago when we interviewed Bill Burns, he actually talks about that. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, I got to look into that. That's, that's, that's totally actually, wow. You know, because like Ackroyd's story about the show getting canceled and then this coincidental, um, uh, you know, potential viewing he saw, that's more, that's more akin to what I usually hear. The fact that this person that Burns talked actually commented him to him about yeah. it. That's, that's, that's a whole different level of, of intimidation. Yeah. And unfortunately, Bill Burns has had some health issues over the last few years. But I mean, I would absolutely love to to uh, chat with him about that. And even Dan Aykroyd about that. I mean, oh, yeah, we got to get our team on on trying to get Aykroyd. You know, we especially with the whole fellow Canadian thing, right? Like the, you got to have an angle there somewhere. You know? Oh, I know. I know. I'm trying. We're trying here, but that's OK. That's okay. All right. Next story. Uh, our good friend Thomas Fessler has interviewed Luis Elizondo. Yes. Yes. Of things. Did Did you catch that? I I caught about seventy five percent of it. I haven't finished it yet, but I caught about seventy five percent of it. I highly recommend that interview. One of the things I loved about that interview is it for the first maybe fifteen minutes or so, what they actually all talked about was um, essentially PTSD and um, and you know the 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 challenges of being an experiencer, um, having a rough childhood, and how that relates to people in combat. And um, and and you know uh, 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 Louis Alonzo and and uh, Thomas Fessler uh, and um, uh, his other co-host who I don't remember the name of um, you know all told um, some very personal stories. It was um, it was quite touching and it was uh, it was very interesting. There was a it was a very uh, it was a very kind of different start to a UFO program. You know, no, for sure. And, and you know the fact that he that he was able to get Lou to talk about experiences. I think Lou. <sighs> I'll bite my tongue on this for saying this, but I really wish Lou would come out as an experiencer. I, I personally, I have zero proof that he is, but all the signs point to that he is. I think, unfortunately, I think that even if he didn't do it on purpose, I think he would look at the information coming about, coming out about his remote viewing as a test run to see what the reaction would be. And I would argue that based on the reaction that we're seeing from the information about the remote viewing, that that has completely ended any chances of him coming out as an experiencer because um, it, it's, it's, it's been ugly and it's been very unhelpful for his, for his credibility, well, which is a shame. It, it really is because we need Lou to open up. We don't need closed door Lou anymore. We need Lou Elizondo to open up. And what are some of the comments out there that are happening regarding his potential uh, about remote viewing? Uh, basically, I mean, I've talked to several people that have essentially, for them, he's lost complete credibility. They, they, they flat out are now questioning everything he said. Um, really? they, they, oh yeah, because from their point of view, remote viewing is, is a complete myth. It's a, it's a complete facade. It was a, it was a CIA boondoggle um, that there's no evidence for it whatsoever. And if, if he's into that kind of thing, then what, you know, how can you trust anything he said? It's bad. I mean, it really, and I'm talking about like, you know, we're talking about, you know, a, I, you know, I would argue a, you know, a fairly small percentage, you know, but it's enough people being vocal about it that, you know, there's a lot of other people who aren't being vocal about it. And um, I'm a little actually concerned about it, to be very honest. Well, I, that's the problem right now. I mean, anything Lou does now is, is going to be raked over the coals with such scrutiny. I mean, he could come out and say, look, I've been to Zeta Reticuli on a craft and this is what the planet looks like. This is what's going on there. There are a number of humans there. There's military members there and they're all working together and whatever. And nobody's going to believe. Him. Well, he could say, I went out for pizza this afternoon and got a, a, a pineapple and pepperoni pizza. And there'd be people calling every pizza joint in the area to verify that's actually what he ordered. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, the level of scrutiny this poor guy's under. I mean, I agree, though. You know, and, and Matthew brings up a good point here. He goes, Lou should be heavily scrutinized. He's a counterintelligence guy. You know, and I, and I agree somewhat with that. But, I mean, the problem that I have, and I'm not trying to let Lou off the hook here, 
Okay. The problem that I have is the more someone like Lou Elizondo opens up publicly, the more we are going to disengage from him and criticize. Agreed. Oh, that, no, that's absolutely true. That's, that's probably, absolutely true. Yeah, that I agree. I agree. We have like, yeah. if, he, if he had a, let's say he took 30 or 50 people from the UFO world and put them in a conference room. And he said, gentlemen, ladies, non-binaries, this is what's going on. This is what happened to me. This is the truth. It cannot go further than this room, but this is this is the truth. Here is the proof. Here's the photographs. Here's the videos. I think that would almost be a better situation but, for him. Quite possibly, but the problem is, is that, that, that there's a lot of things happening in Washington right now that are being done based on his credibility. And so even if even if the people in Congress don't see it as a ding, if a congressman suddenly starts getting a flood of phone calls, why on earth are you listening to this guy who believes in, in witches and, and, and you know, and, and, you know, um, mythical dragons and stuff like that? Because it is remote viewing. It's going to cause a problem. So, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tough situation for sure. Absolutely. All right. Let's move on here, my friend as we are going to get into automated deadly force countermeasures this is so, very fun so this is this this really caught me off guard um so first off this is a, a wonderful article written by um a, a rolling stone individual whose name i actually oh bloody sorry man I, whoever you are i i sincerely apologize i should have i should have made a note of that but um I, but i did uh, i did i'll link the article in my notes and it's a great article you should definitely read it uh and basically what it talks about is it that there were some um documents pulled um through FOIA and so forth as to what was really going on behind the scenes when we had that whole storm area 51 thing right because you know it was really kind of unclear to all of us like how real it was what the, its actual goals were and then what was going on at the government side as into responding to it? And it turns out the response was a little more serious than I think a lot of us expected. Um, it turns out that there were not only a significant number of meetings between many, many different institutions and, and agencies, FBI, Homeland, DI, I mean, like a lot, quite a long list of, of people who were involved. Um, there were planning sessions done. And there were specifically documents given out showing the layers of protection that were put in and specifically mentioning the fact that there are automated deadly countermeasures installed that they don't have control over, essentially. And so they were basically making it very clear that if you let anyone run onto the base, if, if anyone gets by you, they're not going to survive, is what they were basically telling these agencies. And uh, and on top of that, which is already pretty dark, um, it turns out that one of the things that documents is that there were was actually a group of YouTubers. That's what they call them. They don't mention who they are that um, actually attempted to install a tracker on an Area 51 transport bus. And uh, also tried to identify employees that lived on the bus in an attempt to follow them home. So there were people doing some kind of guerrilla ish, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, investigation of, of ways to actually really compromise Area 51 that the agencies were very, very aware of and were monitoring very closely. And unfortunately, even if that was a small group, that put everybody in danger. And, um, and to me, it's just, um, you know, I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. I mean, I figured they were preparing for it at some level, but it's like, you know, what do you, but it turns out they, they took it a lot more seriously than I thought they did. And I'm, I'm very pleased that no one was injured. Were those YouTubers ever identified? They were not identified in the document. Um, it is implied from the document that they were identified internally. So they snuck up to an area 51 bus and tried to put a tracker on it. How stupid do you have to be when you're surrounded by people? Like, what do you do? Just go lean on the bus and and pretend that you're like taking a nap against it or using it for shade in the middle of the desert? Well, and the fact that they knew that they were trying to identify employees to follow them home means that they were listening on their phones. So, like, what were you using? Were you just like calling people and just going, "Oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna track these"? I mean, come on. I mean, how 
I just, I question people's thought process sometimes. It just it boggles the mind. It totally boggles the that mind. Could have, that could have been a lot more dangerous than what we thought. Oh, it, it could have turned, um, especially because very often when one person runs, multiple people run. And so, you know, you could have you could have had a, an event where where like live on YouTube, you saw, you know, 10, 20, you know, um, people mowed down um, in a very graphic way. It, it, now, hopefully they wouldn't have let them get that far. That's why all the agencies were being involved. But the point was, if they got far enough, there was going to be an automated deadly reaction to it so basically the best case scenario happened where everybody just gathered for a party and posting posing for pictures with law enforcement and and military agencies and just said ah we're not going in we know we can't go in and not many people showed up i mean it was still it was still a good number of people but it wasn't anywhere near the numbers that 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 people were talking about so um partly because the environment couldn't support it you know well you know what at least it uh at least it happened, and you know, I mean, hearing about that right now is pretty scary, John. But uh, it is, uh, but it ended well. So you know, we can all laugh and grin, and and everyone had a good time, and and nothing happened. But it is definitely something to think about. Um, you know, if there, if anyone that decides to, to make a run on Wright Patterson, you know, like you know, uh, Kesha, you know, we're we're you know, never know. <laughs> I don't think she'll be allowed back on there anytime. <laughs> She's not as famous as she was 10 years ago. No, 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 no. no. And they probably have her picture up now. <laughs> you got that right, John. Stick around uh, for the after show. Uh, we'll get yep, to the yep. news right now.